But, but what Paul is saying here is that, look, I know where I got in. I know where I'm getting out. But what really matters in the interim is that I'm pursuing Jesus. I'm in hot pursuit of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he gives us three ways that he's pursuing him. And I'm not going to go drilling deep into this, but I just want you to look at it briefly. He said that I may know. Now, that's, that's the, the, the premise of this, this passage, this, this, this verse right here. And he, and he talks about three things, that I may know him, and you have to read into it, and that I may know the power of his resurrection, and that I may know the fellowship of his sufferings. There are three things he basically talks about here that he's pursuing. He said, uh, later on, he said, I follow after. He said, I'm pursuing him. And what, he want, what was he pursuing about him? He said, I want to pursue him personally. I want to, I'm, I'm looking to know Jesus. You know, when he, when he said in the previous verse up there, he said, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. That word knowledge there is a different word for know him here in verse number 10. This word know him is a much more intimate no. It's much more personal no. Back there he said, I have knowledge that Jesus is Christ. He's Lord. He's Messiah. He's Savior. I understand the gospel. I gave it all up to, to know him as my Savior. But he said, now I want to know him. And you can know Jesus and not know Jesus. You can, have, you can be saved and really not know who he is. And the sad thing about it is a lot of people that reject Jesus don't really know who he is. They just know what somebody said about him. How much do you know him today? The second thing he says, I'm pursuing not only him personally, but I'm pursuing his power. He said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. You know, he said, I'm in a search in my life for the power of God on my life. You know, I think one of the things that we... We fail so much in American Christianity is because we have such a, I know we talk about the changing culture and how more unchristian we're becoming, but it's pretty easy to be a Christian in America. And it's so easy to be a Christian here. Sometimes we forget <laughs> that we fail miserably. Jesus said in John chapter 15, without me, you can do nothing. And we fail miserably without the power of God on our life. And it's so easy to go to church. It's so easy to say, I'm a Christian. It's so easy to even go to secular state schools that deny the Creator and deny the Bible and still go to those places and, and find it relatively easy to say, I'm a Christian without too much persecution. And we can live our lives without the power of God. It's only when our marriages are falling apart. It's only when our lives are falling apart. It's only when our families are falling apart. It's only when our nation's falling apart that we forget that we just can't do it without the power of God. Oh, we need the power of God on our life. And one of the things we're, we're dying for in our churches is people seeking the power of God on their life. One of the reasons we need revival like we had last week, one of the reasons we need uh, to be challenged and motivated is because it's so easy just to go day in and day out and not seek the power of God. And he said, in the fellowship of his suffering, we need to pursue his fellowship. I think what he means is the word fellowship, koinonia, it's this identify. It's to, it's to enter into what Jesus entered into. It's to become, to feel what Jesus felt. I want to feel what Jesus feels. I want to love like Jesus loves. I want to forgive like Jesus forgives. I want to give like Jesus gives. I want to comfort like he comforts. I want to care like he cares. I want to empathize like he empathizes. You know, sometimes when we, when we get closer to Jesus and we begin to feel the power of God on our life, our lives begin to change and sin falls off and we become more, we, we live a more holy lifestyle. It's not because, listen, I personally don't believe that people change their lifestyle because some preacher puts pressure on them. I believe people change when the power of God comes on them. Sometimes we get so caught up in pursuing the things of temporary life. We care so much about what the world thinks sometimes. We got to have what the world tells us will make us happy. The pursuit of happiness drives us to have a, a little bit bigger and a little bit better. But Paul said, 
I'm going to follow after him. I'm going to pursue him. And don't get so caught up in pursuing everything in life that you don't pursue the most important person in your life, the Lord Jesus Christ.